Hello everyone. In the last video we developed a backend server with ExpressJS and MongoDB and we used access and refresh tokens for authentication. In today's video we are going to develop the same backend but with Spring Boot and MongoDB. We'll use the Spring Initializer website to create our project. Add the following dependencies. Spring Data MongoDB, Security, Validation, Web, DevTools and Lumbok. With that done, click Generate and the starter project will be downloaded, extracted and open it in IntelliJ. We'll create a MongoDB instance container, create a docker-compose file and define the MongoDB instance in replica mode. With that done, run docker compose up d to start the database container. I create a document package and a user class. This is the user object we'll store in the database. We need to implement the user details interface so that this class can be used by Spring Security for authentication. Return default values for those methods as we won't be using them. Add ID, username, email and password fields. Mark them not null and add the JSON ignore annotation to the password field so that it is not returned to the client. I specify the username and email fields to be unique and lastly add the document annotation to indicate this is a MongoDB entity and data annotation from Lombok to provide constructors, getters, and setters. Next, we add the refresh token document that will store a reference to the user that owns the token. This will enable us to invalidate all refresh tokens for a user. Now we create the user repository interface which extends Mongo repo. We need to enable Mongo repos. Go to the app main class and add the enable Mongo repositories annotation and define the find by username method that returns an optional user object. Similarly, create a refresh token repo to enable refresh token lookups. Next, we create the user service that will be used to look up users. We need to implement the user detail service interface so this service can be used by Spring Security. We need to implement the load by username method and I'll also be adding a find by ID method. Then we'll create a config class to enable MongoDB automatic index creation for document fields that have the indexed annotation and we'll also want to enable the use of transactions. Create a config class that extends abstract Mongo client configuration. Enable auto index creation and define the transaction manager bean. Also add the database name environment variable to application.properties file. Next we'll add the JWT library. Open your pom.xml file and add the JWT dependency. Next, we'll create a JWT helper class to make it easier to work with JSON web tokens. Define the token issuer string and variables for token expiration time, which are supplied through environment variables. Next, define the algorithm and a verifier for each token. Create a constructor that takes the token secrets as arguments, which are injected from environment variables, and then initialize the algorithms and verifiers. Coming back to expiration time variables, I want to define the variables in minutes in my application.properties file. So for the value annotation, we will execute a spring expression, taking the minutes or days environment variable and multiplying it to get the value as milliseconds. Also, specify the environment variables that drive the token secret arguments and define all the environment variables in the application.properties file. Next, I define a method to generate an access token. I set the past and user ID as the subject of the token, then set the issued and expiration dates, and finally sign the token with the access token algorithm created earlier. Create a similar method for generating a refresh token. I am storing a reference to the refresh token as a claim, and then use the refresh token variables for expiration and signing algorithm. Then I create methods for decoding the tokens using the relevant verifiers. If verification fails, an empty optional will be returned. Then define methods to validate if a token is valid, which basically checks that a token was successfully decoded and is present. Lastly, I'll create some convenience methods for extracting the user ID and token ID from the tokens. Next, I create a security package and an access token filter that will parse the request token for incoming requests. If the access token is valid, the user object is set in the security context. 
I define a helper method to help parse the access token from the request header. I then use the parsed token to verify if it is a valid JSON web token. If it is, we do a lookup for the user object and set the user object in the security context. Next, we create an unauthorized error handler that will send an unauthorized response to the client when authorization fails. Next, we create the Spring Security Config file that defines the security configuration for our server. Extend the Web Security Configure adapter and add the configuration, enable web security, and enable global method security annotations. This will allow us to customize authorization for each authenticated endpoint. Inject the user service and the access token exception handler. Define an access token filter bean and a password encoder. We also need to expose the authentication manager as a bean to perform password-based authentication when logging in. And then let's configure HTTP security. We disable course and CSRF. Define the exception handler, set the session policy to stateless, and configure the API auth pass to be publicly accessible, and set that any other requests must be authenticated. Lastly, we add the access token filter to go before the username password filter. Next, let's work on the authentication endpoints. Create a REST package and an authentication REST class. Add the REST controller and request mapping annotations. Then add a login method. This method will accept the body parameter which is of type login DTO, which we'll create shortly. I also add the valid annotation to ensure the DTO is valid and the request body annotation to indicate that this DTO will be sent in the request body. Create the login DTO class and define a username and password variables. Mark them not blank and use the class level getter and setter annotations from Lombok so we don't have to do it manually. Use the authentication manager to verify the incoming username and password. If no exception is thrown, an authentication result is returned which contains the user object. Set it manually in the security context. Afterwards, create a refresh token entity and set the owner reference. Use the refresh token repo to persist the token. Then, use the JWT helper class to generate the access and refresh tokens that will be returned to the client. Let's create a DTO that encapsulates both tokens. Create a token DTO class and add the user ID, access token, and refresh token variables. Again, add the getter, setter, and constructor methods using the Lombok annotations. Coming back to the login method, return a response entity passing in the token DTO containing the generated tokens. And finally, add a transactional annotation to the method so that any database operation is reverted if an exception is thrown generating the tokens. Next, we'll create the signup method. Add the post mapping to indicate this is a post request and the transactional annotation. This method accepts a signup DTO. Let's create that now. Create a signup DTO class and add the username, email, and password variables. I also add some validation annotations to validate the values. Lastly, add the Lombok getter and setter annotations. Coming back to the signup method, create a user entity passing in the incoming username, email, and using the password encoder, the hashed password. Then use the user repo to persist the user entity. Afterwards, create a refresh token entity like before, set the owner, and persist the token. Lastly, generate the tokens and return to the client. Before we can start the server, we need to define the spring.data.mongodb.uri variable in the application.properties file. If you start the server now, you'll get an error, and that is because I made a mistake in the JWT helper class. We need to use the dollar sign curly braces syntax to reference the environment variables. Now you can start the server and use MongoDB Compass to inspect the database. To connect to the database, use this URI format. Once connected, open the DB1 database and we can see the user table. To test our endpoints, I'll be using Postman. Create a new request, set type to post, and enter the signup endpoint URL. Go to the body tab and select the raw radio button and choose JSON type. Enter an object consisting of a username, email, and a one-character password to test our validation. Execute the request and we'll get back an error stating the password is too short. Update the password to be at least six characters and execute the request again and we'll get back the access and refresh tokens. 
If we check the database, we can see a user record and a refresh token record. Now let's test a login endpoint. Change the URL to point to the login endpoint and execute the request. And we get back an unexpected 401 response. So after debugging the code for a while, I found the problem. Open the user class and update the get password and get username methods to return the correct variable. Restart the app and execute the request again in Postman. And now we get back a set of tokens. Next, we'll add the logout endpoint. For this endpoint, we'll want the user to pass in a refresh token. And this refresh token will be invalidated, so it can't be used again to acquire new access tokens. We'll invalidate the refresh token by deleting its reference from the database. For the token refresh methods, we'll check the refresh token reference exists in the database to prove that it's valid. So we'll define the logout method and we'll expect the token DTO as the body of the request. Next, we use the JWT helper class to validate the JWT token to ensure it's valid and not expired. And secondly, we check that the token reference exists in the database. If these checks pass, we can safely delete the token reference from the database and return an OK response. Otherwise, we throw a bad credentials exception. Now let's test it in Postman. Execute a login request to get a refresh token. Copy the refresh token and create a logout request to the logout endpoint. Modify the body to contain the refresh token property. Execute the request and we get back an unexpected 401 response. So we have a problem in the code somewhere. After debugging the code for a while, it turns out the refresh token expiry date was incorrect in the JWT helper class. This is because 30 days as milliseconds is a number that's too large to store as an integer, resulting in a negative value. So to fix that, I will read the days environment variable in the JWT helper constructor argument and multiply it out to get the milliseconds as a long type in the constructor. And one last thing we need to fix is the retrieval of the token ID claim we need to use the asString method instead of toString. With that done, let's go back to Postman and execute the login request to get a refresh token. Then, execute the logout request and we now get back a 200 status code response, meaning it succeeded. And if we try to execute the logout request again, we get back a 401 error, and that is because we invalidated the refresh token, so it is not valid anymore. Next, we'll add the logout all method. This would be useful if a user is logged in from multiple devices, and we would want to log out all of those devices, so they would require the user to log in again with the username and password. So copy paste the logout method and change the endpoint and the method name to logout all. And what we want to do here is delete all the refresh tokens associated with the current user. We don't have those methods yet, so let's define them in the refresh token repo. At the time of writing, there is a bug in string data MongoDB where searching a document reference by a string ID doesn't return the right data. We'll work around that by defining two methods. One that takes an object ID argument, this method will return the right data, and one that takes a string argument, which then relies on the first method to get back the right data. Then, back in our logout all method, use the delete by owner ID string method to delete all tokens whose owner is the user encapsulated in the refresh token. Before we test it in Postman, let's check the database to see how many refresh tokens we have for a user. In my case, I just have one refresh token. Next, I go to Postman and execute the login request to get a new refresh token. Checking the database again, we see now we have two tokens. Now, use the refresh token from the login request to execute the logout all request. When we check the database again, we can see all the refresh tokens are gone, meaning those tokens cannot be used anymore to acquire new access tokens. Next, we'll add the endpoint for acquiring new access tokens, which will then be used to access protected endpoints. This will be done by supplying a long-lived refresh token to get back a short-lived access token. Define the access token method which accepts the token DTO as the request body. We validate the incoming refresh token by ensuring it is valid and exists in the database. We then look up the user and generate a new access token. Lastly, we return a response containing a new access token but the same refresh token that was sent in. Now let's test it in Postman. Execute a login request to get a new refresh token. Next, create an access token request and set the body to contain the copied refresh token. Execute the request and we get back a new access token with the same refresh token we sent. Now we add the endpoint for acquiring new refresh tokens. Define the refresh token method that accepts a token DTO body. Then, we validate the incoming refresh token like before. Next, we look up the user create a refresh token entity and persist it. 
Then generate a new access and refresh token and return it to the client. And one more thing, we need to delete the incoming refresh token from the database. Now to test it, open the database and delete all the refresh token entities. Next, execute the login request. Check the database and we have one refresh token entity. Copy the refresh token and create a new request to the refresh token endpoint. Paste the refresh token and execute the request. We get back a new refresh token and a new access token. Check the database and we have only one refresh token entity, meaning the previous one was deleted and is no longer valid. Now let's put the access token to use. We'll create a user rest to retrieve details about a user. Define the request mapping for this controller. We'll start off by creating a me endpoint, which is a get request. This request simply returns the current user object. Now if you remember from our security config class, we defined the authentication endpoints to be public, meaning anyone or unauthenticated users can access them, and every other endpoint can only be accessed by authenticated users. In Postman, execute the login request and copy the returned access token. Then create a new request to the me user endpoint. In the authorization tab, set the type to bearer token and paste the access token value. Execute the request and we get back the current user object. We'll add another endpoint to retrieve user details based on the specified user ID. Then we'll use the user repo to look up the user and return it to the client. Now let's say we want users to only be able to retrieve their own details, but not somebody else's. We use the pre-authorized annotation and define the condition that must be satisfied to allow this request. In our case, I'll use the authenticated principal user ID and check it against the user ID in the URL. Also, change the ID variable to use the path variable annotation. Now in Postman, create a request to this new endpoint and set the user ID in the URL, which you can find from the login request response object. Make sure to paste a valid access token in the authorization tab. Execute the request and we get back the current user details. Now change the user ID in the URL by changing the last character. Execute the request and we get back a 403 forbidden response, meaning we are not authorized to get details about a user that this ID may belong to. And there you have it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.